Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Open Mic with the MVP, Marco. I am, of course, your host, the MVP, Marco. Um, it wouldn't be anybody else. Um, Sheena hasn't gotten rid of me yet. I think I'm doing pretty good on these shows so far, so I, I think I'm in it for the long haul. We'll see what happens. But anyway, um, the Pod Foundation brings you this show, I like to say. Obviously, Chick Foley has something to do with it, but I like to, you know, the collective of the the Pod Foundation, the greatest collection of uh, content creators and podcasters known to man. Um, obviously, that's the Chick Foley show with myself, Sheena, Seth, and uh, the fig god, Jordan uh, Wells. We also have the Turnbuckle Tavern. I mean, the, the workhorses of the Pod Foundation, the guys that are pumping out, you know, content literally every single day of the week. I know for a fact, because I am on one of those shows on the Raw Down. Um, every Thursday, 8 o'clock on YouTube, you can hear me and J-Bone in our crazy musings on uh, the world of WWE and some other stuff in professional wrestling as well. We kind of go off on a tangent. Um, the Extra Cooler Show, we welcome them back. They're back from hiatus, uh, pumping out some new episodes. They get, uh, you, you get Nick, you get Matt, you get the rest of the Survivor Series team, as they like to say. Just bringing you all the all the nostalgic goodness of uh, professional wrestling, and then last but not least is uh, coming down the aisle with J Bone, my like I said, my partner from the Raw Down. Hear him every week. He he's another content machine. That guy's pumping out shows every week, as well as you know on Instagram, he's pumping out videos and reels and all this stuff. So, like I said, we're the great we're the greatest collection of content creators in in this game right now. I think. I mean, I'm a little bit biased, but that that could be me. Anyway, let's bring you to my my guest. I'm very excited about this one. Uh, this has been a long time in the making. I think I reached out to this person last year uh, when I was gonna st- when I was gonna start doing the show, but I kind of like got scared of doing the show and went into hiatus a little bit. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go full force. So we're here, and that's all that matters. Um, I'm not sure if he'd agree with me, but I consider you know if you if you take the if you take the Turnbuckle Tavern right and you make you, you, you make them like the NWO. Let's say they're the NWO. You have your Chads, you know, uh, Hogan and Nash, right? But then you get this guy. His name's Mike Belcaster. He's like the he's like the Scott Hall of the Turnbuckle Tavern, the cool guy, like the, the guy that you can whip a soda at his head in the middle of the ring. And he'll just take those juices and, and slick his hair back and, and keep it moving. So let me bring him on. Uh, Mike Belcaster, how are you doing, sir? <laughs> hey, yo. Uh, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful intro. I'm doing fantastic, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. I mean, like I said, I, I, I consider you like the, uh, you bring the coolness to the, uh, to the Turnbuckle Tavern. Would you agree at all? I, I, tr- pro- I try. I'm very modest. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, be like, oh, yeah, man, I'm the coolest guy. No, I'm, 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 I, in, in my eyes, I'm probably like the, the, the nerdiest dude of the Tavern. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, you have, uh, I mean, you have obviously you have Tom too as well. He brings, yeah, oh, yeah. He brings a nerd factor. As He's well. like the 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 Boris Hogan of the NWO. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god! Um, and you have Ace, who I uh, recently interviewed. His episode will be out soon. And so, Hell yeah, I mean, you have Ace. You have it's like I said. It's like you guys are like the NWO, dude. You like the NWO of the uh, podcast world. Yes, we're, we're taking over. And man, we, were, we actually <laughs> talked about this on the uh, Chick Foley show. The growth of of the Turnbuckle Tavern like brand, like. The amount of like followers you have now on Instagram, freaking almost like twelve thousand followers, in, like that amount of time. It, it's it's insane, man. What do, you, yeah. what do you think of like the growth of like? Are you like shocked by it at all, or? No, man. I, I think a lot of the hard work pays off. I mean, you know, we yeah. did we we with the reels. With I mean, the TikTok growth was insane too, man. Like when they started yeah. the TikTok page, I I was watching videos hit like. 2 million, you know, views, 3 million views. I was like, wow, this is insane. But like the, the Instagram thing, man, thank, I'll thank reels for that. But I'll think, I'll think, you know, the hard work and crew at the tavern, because I don't do any, I just show up for shows here. (laughs) I'm just a voice. I don't do all the technicality stuff, but uh, yeah, man, the content's there. It is so quality. Uh, They, they always, you know, hot topic left and right. They always got the good stuff. Like even with the Adam Copeland, you know, debut and AW, yeah. like they, they put it up like well, a month ago, like, oh yeah, punk got fired, but good thing we got, you know, edge coming down in the future and look, look what happened, man. It blew up quick and I'm happy yeah. to see it, man. All the, every, 
everybody, including the Pod Foundation, we all deserve the love, man. We, we've been busting our humps, kicking ass, and you know, taking names, man. And so yeah, I'm get, happy to see the growth. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely see that too. With uh, obviously, uh, when I had I had um, extra cooler on a while back um, in the beginning of the sh- beginning of the like the early stages of the show. And he, you know, I, I asked him, oh, how does it, how does it feel like, you know, you're, you're with us, the pod foundation stuff. And I'm like, how does it be the only one that actually in the group actually has a talent? Yeah. <laughs> and you actually do something. And he's just like, no, no, that's all right. But uh, no, he like, even him, like the amount of like growth, like the growth he's had, like the amount yeah. of like, you know, you, you, we're seeing his gear on, uh, on TV. Yeah, he's, he's, every he's week, everywhere. Man. Like he's in the indies and he, he's in the majors. He's you know Matt, Matt Cardona comes yeah. to him for for the designs. Now he's with FTR. It's like you know, it, it's right. it's awesome to see. It's on like the brawler, that. man. He's got his he's got his gear on a figure. How cool exactly. is that? <laughs> how like how insane is that? Where you like you 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 drew like that your design. Well, it's it, it's a collaboration, but you put that design. You did it. You actually yeah. put the work in, and now you're gonna see it probably on a figure too. Like you said, like a micro brawler it's, figures, it's crazy, merchandise. Yeah. Insane. Okay. Couldn't be happier for the guy. They, but, they're uh, both of them, Nick and Matt. They're both killing it, man. And it's, it's awesome to see just everybody kind of succeed here, man. Like we've been doing this for I mean almost four years, three years, something like that, right? So oh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, it's insane. So I'm. I'm very, very proud of everybody. I'm very happy to see everybody growing and, you know, shining, blossoming, little flowers we be. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the, uh, so you coming in to the Turnbuckle Tavern and all that stuff. We don't have to go into full detail of, uh, <laughs> of, of how it happened, but uh, give, give, uh, give us like, give us your, like your take on like how everything happened. Like, how did you connect with the Chads? With, yeah. Like, all that stuff. No, for sure. So, like, I was I was on a former podcast. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll rename uh, nameless because mm-hmm. I'm not trying to start no no guff here. But yeah. uh, it was just doing figure podcasts. I, I mean, uh, pandemic happened. I was I was doing stand up comedy beforehand, uh, yeah. and. Uh, once i mean what was i supposed to do with no stages no bars no nothing to go do the stand-up and uh i trained at second city and did all like this crazy stuff like uh i, I did a stand-up show in vegas like i was just floating around and then everything shut down so it's like mm. kind of stuck wondering what i was gonna do uh aw has been picked up uh you know it was, it had the wrestling passion like going really strong but i was like you know i, I, I used to work indies uh for maybe like six years seven years and kind of fell out of it uh long story short i lost my brother my dad in 2016 aw resurge brought me back you know the passion of it all uh so i was like oh cool like i like wrestling like my dad was my big wrestling buddy Mm -hmm. i mean him used to go to all of our shows together so uh had a huge giant wrestling collection started dabbling around with uh instagram because i never had one up until my stand-up days my improv days and i was like oh okay like so let me start posting some of my toys uh got picked up with a friend started we he was like hey man let's do podcasts i was like all right man never tried it before i'm, I'm down you know <laughs> I'll, never, I'll, I'll never say no twice i'll only say it once uh, <laughs> so uh yeah we were doing that i think we we in his ver- uh, verbiage it was a season and we were about to do season two he kind of fell off the map so uh i did a debate with tavern man and um me chad sneed were all big pantera fans like we got along really like clicked very very well together and i was like all right these guys are cool and then uh yeah it just kind of grew from there and everybody was just like oh we want to kind of persuade you to join up over (laughs) here and you know we we were already part of the pod foundation so like we didn't need no introduction or anything so it's just a comfortable space and i started doing these little uh maybe like half hour videos with tom and we were mm. talking about like my fandom with wrestling and you know uh we would do like specials on like the the road warriors and stuff like that and then it just became hey let's start a figure show let's start this let's do this and it blew up man and uh i think at one point i was doing like six shows a week yeah, <laughs> some yeah. Point down here. it was insane man <laughs> so the, the workflow slowed down a little bit which i'm I'm not complaining about but yeah it was hustling man i love doing wrestling stuff <laughs> yeah I, I think uh i think just to add on to that with the uh the amount of shows like i think in the beginning like we all like, like when everyone got together and we were all doing it was just so much stuff going on i was like oh let's yeah. do this show and let's jump on this show and like literally everybody was doing each other's shows and, it was, <laughs> and then i think like at some point it was just like you know obviously life gets in the way but at the same time you're like let's like compartmentalize 
who's gonna go where. Like I think around yeah. the time when like the raw down started, like the actual like inception of it, I think that's when everything started to like, all right, Fig Night, that's gonna be the show, Raw Down's gonna be the show, and then like yeah. so on and so forth. And it just started it was more of like a schedule thing, but in the beginning of it, it was just like yeah, those like people doing like seven or eight shows. Like, <laughs> like, how do you how do you do this? Like, let's let's let's. I want to get to the comedy stuff because I did not know that. Oh yeah, no, for sure, it. absolutely. But um, <laughs> I want to ask, like, how was that? Like jumping on different like six oh, seven shows. Like it was like, insane. I mean, I've even dropped, I even hopped on the raw down a few times, which is not my right. specialty yeah, whatsoever. I but I was, <laughs> I was like, yeah, hey, let's do it. But uh, <laughs> let's let's see. We had the the GCW show on Mondays. We had Fig mm-hmm. Night on Tuesdays. The wrap up was on Wednesdays. Thursday was, uh, I was doing something on Thursdays. I forgot what it was. But then Friday was shot of nostalgia. That's that. That yep. was the five show schedule and uh, everything in between. I mean, we had hanging at the tavern, all this, yep. all these specials that we were doing after pay per view shows, and uh, yeah, it was chaotic as hell. But it was fun, and I don't know. It kept me on my toes. Like I, I got very comfortable. I had to get comfortable in front of the mic and the camera. And I think that was the best way to do it. Was deep dive right into it. Like you know, yeah. Don't 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 take the steps into the pool. You just dive into the deep end and see what happens. Yeah, I think that's I think that's how it, it mostly, especially when I like started doing this because it's, yeah. it's a, obviously it's a one man show. I don't have you know, I don't have Sheena or Seth or oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on. So it's like a little like. Well, it was a little overwhelming at first, but I, I actually like it now. I actually like being able to like, you know, sit down and talk one-on-one with somebody or like yeah. when I, when I had the chads on here, you know, having them, that, that was amazing. <laughs> listen, like listening to like how they came together and you know, the whole, uh, I'm not sure if it's still, if it's a gimmick or a true story, if they are actually related, I, don't, I, I still don't know. I'm living in the kayfabe world on that K- one. Kayfabe, but... kayfabe brother. <laughs> I don't know. They, 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 you know, they play their poker faces and they, they haven't said anything yet. So they keep that gimmick, keep, keep that gimmick alive. But, uh, it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, um, let me go. Let's go to the, the con. I did not know you did. Yeah, man. Comedy. How long did you do that for? Uh, for- I, I started doing, uh, say 2018 and uh I, I took classes down at second city uh just trying to figure it out uh first it started with stand-up and then one of the guys from stand-up was like oh you should try improv too to get loose mm-hmm. on the stage and like get you know just kind of shake all the the you know the yeah the worry out well because when you're up there it's hard to talk and they they were cold as hell they throw you up on stage uh microphone in a room of four people you know and then you'd have to tell jokes and hopefully something would react you know yeah. <laughs> so it, it was it was insane man uh very fun though i took uh two classes of stand-up i did uh the whole improv thing there uh we, we had an improv group called daddy issues uh it was super fun <laughs> and i met a lot of great people doing it and uh it was the, i think it probably stopped doing it in total like right when pandemic happened, man, I, I literally was in Vegas that December came back January hit. And then by the time March came, it was like, Oh, everything's done. <laughs> it, it was tough, man. Did you like, uh, like what, what got you into doing like, you know, pursuing like a comedy, like career, like doing stand uh, and stuff like that. It's it, So it's weird. So I was doing uh, pro wrestling. You know, I got I started doing independent wrestling probably like 2011, something like that. So uh, I, I loved performing like I was, it was, you know, I was I started off just helping out and then I was doing timekeeping. Uh, and then I moved to doing ring announcing, which I absolutely fell in love with. Yeah, it, it's so cool being up there. And I've never held a microphone in my entire life like that and being in front of a crowd like <laughs> it was exhilarating, man. I, I absolutely <laughs> like just fell, fell in love with it. And so uh fell out of that and then like i said my, my brother and my dad passed away which it just threw my whole mm. life into shambles for like a year right like it was recovery time yeah. was just ridiculous so trying to get back to a happy space i used to watch stand up with my dad and my brother a lot and i was like yeah you know what the hell let's let's i live in chicago second city is 15 minutes from me like yeah. let's figure it out and i signed up for the classes i was super super nervous getting into it like i was you know just I, i'm not i was never a big speaker especially public speaker i hate yeah. talking <laughs> <laughs> shocker right uh but yeah it, it, it made me not only better at you know public speaking and being but it just uh, overall helped with uh you know mental quickness and uh, like just keeping mm-hmm. you on your toes being able to walk into a room and read the room you know so like it, it was very beneficial mentally 
And uh, yeah, I was happy as a pig and shit. Like I was <laughs> being yeah. able to go out and perform. <laughs> and uh, my our improv crew, we sold out uh, two months worth of shows at Second City. Like we were wow. on fire. We were doing great stuff. And um, while while on top of doing the improv, I was doing the stand up with it. And uh, yeah, it, just, it really enjoyed bringing people into a space and making them smile for you know maybe five minutes ten minutes whatever i got it was it was always worth it that's awesome what what was it what was your like what would you say your comedy style oh uh, i was very be? very into burt kreischer uh i grew up watching george carlin and all this mm -hmm. stuff so i was mitch hedberg uh i was very storyteller aspect because okay. I, like i i lived a wild couple years so i like i i've closed out a bar with dave Chappelle and my mom in like 2050 what? yeah it's wild wild stuff but uh we, we could go back to that in a minute yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh Jeez. yeah I, I was uh i was just uh i'm, I'm I got a totally space but uh yeah no oh, I, yeah, I, com I, comedy I, style like what what's yeah yeah so like? i i i was like a good one-liner guy love doing that and then uh I was story like I would tell this Chappelle story was like one of my favorite things or like I have this one story about like the first time I met Marilyn Manson and like he was absolutely everything you would picture a rock star to be you know black garbage bags taped to the walls in the locker in the, in the dressing room like he was like hand me my drug purse and I was like this, this is everything I've ever wanted like as walking into a concert backstage like this is you, you felt like you were in front of the Beatles like it was insane yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, big storytelling guy. Love doing one-liners. Like I, I my 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 big opener was like, "Hey guys, I'm like I don't I don't do cocaine. Never done it, but I always trim my nose hair in anticipation." Like, <laughs> you know, like silly shit like that. So it, it was always like I, I like witty, stupid jokes, and it was, they everybody always like had a good time with it. So I, I always try to bring a good energy when I get up there, and even if I'm telling weird jokes or if i'm telling stories like i just try to keep it as lighthearted as possible but like yeah man like everybody i want you to get story time sit down let's talk you know because well, yeah i like the intimacy and I, like, I love doing crowd work like you okay. can talk to people like what's your job you know and they'll, they'll come back and like you just go back and forth with it and, um it's just it was so new to me that like i was just like oh i could i could do this forever like i i was i was feeding off <laughs> yeah <geez. laughs> Oh man, I always thought of like doing that type of stuff, but I was I, I'm, I'm a big scaredy cat when it comes to jumping on stage. But now, like for a living, my shoot job, I'm, I'm you know I'm doing that pretty much. I'm doing you know, <laughs> talking to people, presentations yeah. in front of. It's so it's wild. like it, it, it's it's it, it comes natural after too. Like when you're just in front of people just talking, but to be yeah. funny is a different, a whole different element. Like you might think something's funny, but obviously your job is to put that out there and see if someone else laughs. And I remember. Yeah. Uh, I remember Patrice O'Neill said uh, oh, he always Patrice. used to say <laughs> it should be 50-50. It should be 50% 50 of the people laughing in the room, 50% of the people just shocked and, uh, and horrified. <laughs> at what you just said. It shouldn't, everyone shouldn't be laughing at everything you say. It, yeah, should, be no, mixed, it should be a mixed bag. Uh, I love Patrice O'Neill, man. That, that is a, a name that hits home, man. I, I oh. used to watch him. Uh, Shorty's watching Shorties on County oh, Central. Man, oh, oh yeah, flashbacks, right? Uh, all the stand-up specials were so great. Did I go on YouTube and I literally like watch, um, like not watch, but I listen to like when he was on like Opie and Anthony when he had his own yeah, show on oh. Sirius XM, Black Phillip. Listen to that all the <laughs> time. I go back to his uh, stand-up elephant in the room. Uh, yeah, tough so crowd. Good. If you if you've heard of that show, tough. Oh crowd. my it god, was, yeah. Jim Colin <laughs> Quinn, Jim Norton, like all those guys that used to hang out and stuff. And man, that's that's the type of like I love comedy, and that's that style of comedy is like that's my style. Like all those guys too, like all pretty much came from Boston. Patrice, yeah, Bill Rogan, Bill Burr, um, and they all and then they all moved to obviously New York, and they all became this like click. Bob Kelly, another yeah. another one of those guys too. Like so, that's like the type of style. That I kind of you know took on for myself when I you know when I like to you know tell jokes and you know kind of yeah. things in that way. <laughs> um, I kind of took on that persona just by listening to it so much. What do you like? What do you uh like? I know your comedy style storytelling, but what who is your like? Who do you go to as far as like uh, inspiration when it comes to when it comes to that? Who Ooh. makes up your your comedy stylings? I know you said like There's... Carlin and all that stuff, but is there oh, one yeah, specific yeah, for person? Sure uh it's as hard as like there's so many people i always wanted to aspire to be when i was trying to think about like like writing yeah. jokes like i was always trying to be the anthony jeselnik or <laughs> you know somebody of like but i don't have that cold 
deadpan yeah. look to me. Like I'm too well, like I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I'm the Burt Kreischer type of guy. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm big, I'm hairy. I'm, you know, <laughs> I like to have a good time. So like, I can never go up to a place and be like, you know, I can't pull the, the heel move. Like I'm always, I'm always yeah. going to be the baby face in the room. So that's, that's usually what it goes with. But I like, I, I could like, we, we had a class. It was like two weeks worth of it where we were just doing one liners. And like, I was just sitting there watching Mitch Hedberg and like, trying to pick apart the way he thought because it was so so out there so wild like the, the his jokes like talking about the, oh, the rice you can't if you ever hungry enough where you want a thousand of something even yeah. of rice man you know <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's so so silly and like you're like how the hell did he think about like and so that that's where i would try to like sit down and like try to get outside of the natural bubble of you know even with the storytelling stuff try to find a unique way to tell the story even if you embellish, like you got to figure out where you can embellish. You got to figure out how to embellish. Uh, yeah, where you can lift it up a little bit more, where you can bring it down and like get really close. And you know, and then yeah. you got to there's stage work. Like you got to walk. You know, how am I going to walk around? Where am I going to be? Am I going to yeah. tap on the like for somebody's at the door? Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> shit like that. So, it, but yeah, it's, it's it's I try to take everybody. You know, like I love I love Robin Williams. I love. Yeah, I love Cat Williams. Like you, you go all across the spectrum, man. Both Williams. I, I, yeah. <laughs> so like, I, I was, I was always very into it. I, like, I just love, I love laughing. I like being happy, man. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard thing when you really need it, and when you find it, like you love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I remember, uh, like, I think with comedy too, like, if, if if you're into comedy and you're a fan of it, I think like. Obviously, you're not gonna find every single person, you know, funny. But at the same yeah. time, you, a majority of the you're gonna you're gonna have a, a, a like a lot of different stylings. It's, it's it's like professional wrestling. Like you might Very like certain so. different types of <laughs> professional wrestling. You might like lucha style. You might like strong style. You might like yeah. you know, big meaty men slapping meat. You might like little <laughs> stuff. But like you're still gonna have like a majority of the things you like. And that's that's with comedy too. Like you might not like everything, but there are gonna be certain. Like you said, the contrast from Robert Williams to Cat Williams—that's like, yeah, that's a huge contrast there. And uh, absolutely, yeah. man. <laughs> just, just a funny, not not really a funny story, but my my father, um, he, he passed away in two thousand nine, but um, huge religious guy, like really you know, from the south, um, you know, Christian, all that stuff. Um, and my mother, you know, she's from a pair. She's, you know, she was actually, she actually did like open mics and stuff when she was younger. She, she nice. wanted to be like a full-time comedian at one point, but she was like a huge fan of George Carlin. And, uh, um, yes. I think it went, I think it went show, I think it went, um, uh, our special was, but he did that thing on, uh, God. It was like yeah, the last yeah, yeah. pit. And it was like about like a ten. Of, I remember it was like me, my father, and my mother sitting there like we were watching it, like, <laughs> HBO. It was a premiere of it. My mother was like, oh, we got to watch us. And I remember my I remember my father like watching it and him like saying like, yo, you know, there is no God. Well, like, if there was strike, may he strike me dead right now. He's like, Oh wait, no, I feel a little tingle. I feel something <laughs> like, but my father was like, he was actually laughing. He thought it was yeah. funny. like, that's how like powerful comedy is. You could be like the most, I mean, the most religious person in the world, but if someone like articulates a joke in a certain way and tells a story in a certain way, you'll, th that's how you know they're geniuses. And I yeah. kind of want to transition over to, Chappelle, because I think he's oh. one of, if not the like the best <laughs> storyteller. Like he can tackle any type of subject, and it's 100%. it's just palatable. And like he has that, like I don't want to say he's he has that like thing that Patrice said. Like not everyone's gonna laugh at yeah. everything he says, but it's gonna be fifty. It's gonna be fifty fifty. Some people are gonna be like mortified by what he said, and some people are gonna laugh hysterically at, he, at what he said. <laughs> and. uh and uh, watch all the specials on Netflix, all the ones that he put out there. They're just so good. The trilogy yeah. is just gold. The tri I mean, I could go on and off <laughs> with Dave Chappelle, but how the hell did you end up, <laughs> you and your mother, hanging out with Dave Chappelle? So a very, very long story. But what, so I, I, the, the pro wrestling company I was working with at the time was uh, Resistance Pro. Uh, it was ran by Billy Corgan uh, pre his TNA days okay. pre his you know nwa purchase uh this was like him kind of getting his feet wet uh he was co-owners with uh two guys that lived you know on the south side of chicago and then uh my mom and i came in and uh kind of helped build up like what the, the missing pieces so uh, like you know they they needed somebody to do publicity stuff for them like i would help them find uh 
TV station that they could get on at two in the morning so we could watch it like ECW back in the day, you know, stuff like that. But uh, became really, really close with Billy Corrigan. Uh, you know, we, we were, uh, I, I mean, I, get, <laughs> I proposed to my wife during the time we were there. Uh, we got yeah. married in a wrestling ring. We were in the National Enquirer. Uh, a, lot, a lot of crazy <laughs> shit happened. <laughs> so um, it, it was it was a trip. But so Billy, the, the, the company blows up you know like like all good things they do come to an end uh so billy removes himself from the company we all kind of follow along with them the, the, the smarter ones did uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah i was i was out in dc with my buddy giovanni my mom billy corgan uh I'm trying to think there was a couple other people there but we were there for like a of wo- like a wounded uh soldiers concert so all the, all the band members yeah would play with like Tom Morello, Billy Corgan was doing it. Uh, my mom does a lot of work with the military, so she helped set this up for him and stuff. Uh, but uh, who's there? The, the, one of the guys from Pink Floyd. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. So it was, it was like, wow, this is insane. Like, let's go to it. Let's go. You know? <laughs> so we're, we're out there. Uh, and while we're there, we go to the, we do the concert thing. We have a great time. Billy's like, come back to my hotel afterwards. Like, well, I'll meet you guys in the lobby. We'll, we'll hang out and talk. And I was like, all right, cool. So we get to the hotel and we're like, it's me, my mom, my mom's friend, Mick, uh, I was her coworker and my buddy Giovanni, who I just was like, Hey, come to DC with us. He's like, Oh hell yeah. I'd love to. <laughs> uh, so we get there and we're in the four seasons, you know, DC. So I'm like, Oh, this is crazy. Like never, it's probably the first time I ever stepped into a place that I could not afford to be. Exactly. <laughs> so you're like, like tea is like $30. Like I'm free. Like I, I, I was, I'm so before this, I like I didn't start drinking until my late twenties. This probably was the start of it. Was this night? Uh, yeah. But like I was, I got there. I'm like, I'm gonna have a green tea. Like I'm gonna hang on. I'm gonna wait for Billy to get down here. And we're sitting there. And Tom Morello walks by, and I was like, Oh, we were just at the concert. Like start chatting him up. He was from out. He's from Chicago. He's from like Edgebrook or something. So shooting some shit about the, you know the Chicago Cubs. Uh, his guitar. I play guitar. So I was like, Oh, guitar talk up and uh, you know his ear off. And <laughs> while we're doing talking to him, Kathy Griffin walks by. What she, she's she stops and she's like, Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, like, and we're like, Fucking Kathy Griffin is crazy. So, we, you know, <laughs> can we get a selfie? Yeah, just, you know, I don't, I don't hang out with teamsters. Like, <laughs> it was really, <laughs> really random. Like, it was just like, Okay, and so she's like, Uh, I, I, my mom's like, What are you doing here? And she's like, Oh, well, we're here. Uh, Dave Chappelle's getting the Mark Twain Award, and I was oh, like, Oh, so it's like, Okay. It, wild right so I'm like we're like oh shit and she's like oh yeah he's supposed to be here like chris rock was in the lot like there's so many people Holy in shit. the bar area so i'm like i'm not going to, like I'm, this is it i capped off like i met tom Morello and kathy griffin like i'm having a great time so we're sitting there uh we billy finally comes down he's like oh hey what's going on you know let's, let's go let's we'll sit down we got a really big long table uh his crew's there so everybody's telling stories and you know having dinner sharing drinks having a good time and I see Chappelle out of the corner of my eye, like with his kid on his shoulder, his wife, he's walking through the lobby. And my buddy's like, dude, 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 it's Chappelle, man. And I was like, no, 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 we're not going to bother him because that's what made him go to Africa. Like, we're going to yeah, be very, right. very nice. <laughs> like, I'm not, me. yeah, I'm not trying to be the guy that's like, hey, Dave Chappelle, what's going on? And he's like, man, fuck you guys. You know, <laughs> yeah, ah, get away. Get from away me. Ah. <laughs> so we're sitting there at like an hour or two past it's probably like 11 o'clock at night and uh i turn and i see Chappelle at the bar and i was like dope he's sitting by himself he's just on his phone like doing this i'm like yeah man i was like my buddy's like should we go say hi to him i was like no 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 i was like just just let's play it out let's see what happens maybe we'll cross paths right i don't want to be that guy yeah he's like all right so i see Chappelle get up and he goes gun lines outside he pulls out a cigarette and i was like grab my buddies by the shoulder, you know, drag them out. I was like, come on, come on, come on. He's like, what are you doing? And I was like, just shut up. Come on. So I get out there. I light my cigarette. Chappelle looks up and goes, hey, man, you got a light? And I was like, boom, we got it. Oh, <laughs> so perfect. I said, I'm like, hell yeah, man, for you. I was like, absolutely. So I'm like scrambling through my pockets, trying to get my lighter out. I pull out one phone because I had, like, it was like the old Apple C phones they were like plastic iphones yeah so i had two of them because one was for spotify because i put all my music on it because we were traveling and the other one was for my normal phone shit and so i'm sitting there juggling phones and i get my lighter out light a cigarette he's like oh thanks man he's like i'm dave 
I was like, hi, Dave. I'm Mike. Like, who gives a fuck? About me? <laughs> <laughs> so he, my buddy's like, I'm Giovanni. Pleasure to meet you. you know, Chappelle's just like, hey, man. He's like, we started just shooting the shit. And we're like, oh, man, it's so cool. Like, you, I heard you're getting an award. Like, we ran into Kathy Griffin. He's like, Kathy Griffin's here? He's like, shit, let's go. <laughs> so, like, we ran around the lobby trying to find other comedians because he was so excited and nobody was there. And he was just like, oh, what man, like he looked like a, a hurt puppy. And I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I was like, shit, man, like his whole night's like going to be ruined because he gets to hang out with us. <laughs> so I was like, hey, can I buy you beer? Sorry, your friends left. Like, I, I, I'll, let's go sit down at the bar. He's like, and he's like, like, nah, man, he's like, you're going to come with me. We're going to sit down and I'm going to buy you a drink. And I was like, oh, shit. So what I, fuck, I, I was not like, I, I think I've had like two beers my entire life up until this point. And he was like, oh, what are you drinking? And I don't know. The bartender walks up and he, Dave's like, I'll have like an Amstel Light. And I was like, I'll have what he's having. He's like, motherfucker, don't you dare pull out the the, <laughs> the Samuel L. Jackson drink. <laughs> so I'll have what he's having. <laughs> so we were cracking up. And this whole time, it's just me, my buddy, and Chappelle. Like, we're just sitting at the bar. Dude, that's my crazy, mom's dude. never seen me drink a day in her life. She comes walking past me. And she's, <sighs> you know, she's had a few cocktails. She sees me, she falls on the floor and she goes, what the fuck are you doing? You don't drink. Like, you know, she was just like, what? <laughs> she was just shocked. And then I looked at her and I was like, giving her that look like, yo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh -huh, the so, fuck? yeah. <laughs> so Chappelle turns and she goes, oh my God. And she falls on the floor again. And like, he's like, man, he's like, I was like, Dave, this is my mom. Mom, this is Dave. He's like, hey, mama. You know, like, so I was like. Yeah, my mom's like, he never drank a day in his life. Like, he's this is his like first beer. And he goes, shit. He's like, don't let me become the, the reason for all your old problems, man. <laughs> so we're we're chatting up, we're having a good time. And I was like, hey, it's like, do you want to meet Billy? Have you ever met Billy Corgan? Do you want to meet Billy Corgan? He's like, is that that motherfucker from Pearl Jam? He's like, he gave me a skateboard. I almost broke my damn arm on it one time. And I was like, close. It's like same generation. <laughs> I was like, but he's over here. He's like, hell yeah. So I I, I walk over to the table. I'm like, Billy. This is my friend Dave Chappelle. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so there was it was a cool, like little shocking moment. Everybody in the in the the lot, like it, it became we met up at eleven. We didn't leave Chappelle until like five thirty in the morning. Damn. Like it was insane. And he was like, I'm just gonna hang out and close out the bar, like hey, chill with you guys, man. <laughs> and I was like, This Holy is crazy. Shit, dude. So yeah, that was a, that was a wild, wild story. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and he was the coolest motherfucker I've ever met in my entire life, as he would be. Uh, he lives he lived up to every expectation possible. Funny, charming, super, super smart, man. And like, I was just, I, I it took me until like four thirty in the morning to be like, I'm a huge fan. Like, I it was none of that the whole time. I was just like, yeah, I'm from Chicago. We were showing pictures of each other's kids. Like, he's, you know, it was just, it was, a, it was a really nice, intimate encounter then i wasn't expecting it to be that cool <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> you know like usually it's like a five second like hey hey cool nice to meet you can i get a selfie yeah we didn't even take a picture until like way way late like it was probably like close to six in the morning like before he jetted off he's like my wife's gonna kick my ass i gotta get upstairs <laughs> i was like all right man fair enough <laughs> Jeez, man. crazy man absolutely crazy <laughs> well, his story kills mine i hung out with uh marty janetti and doink Ooh. Uh, oh well that that that's that's <laughs> sounds like a crazier story than <laughs> yeah no, it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad they were uh it was at i think it, it was at, it was at a uh it was at one of the uh it was a local wrestling show we were all at the same hotel he was his his door was uh, across from ours we didn't even know oh his, his room. <laughs> and uh um, he we had at one point we had doink's wig I don't know how we got it. He had it. Uh, Marty Janetti had Doink's wig with the, the curly green <laughs> Afro wig. He had that. Uh, he was wearing it at one point in the in the uh, in the hallway. Uh, we invited him in the room. We drank. We drank with them and stuff like that. Hell yeah! No drugs. No drugs involved. <laughs> All right. None of that stuff. Not, He's not that heavily you've seen. drinking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> went to the bar, drank, and that that's when we see Doink, and he was there. We drank with uh, Doink. And all that stuff. That's I mean, there was nothing fun about that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he was he's definitely a ladies' man, I'll tell you that much. Oh, uh, they, they, they try yeah, to be. He was, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was uh yeah, he was all over the place. He was hitting on all the uh all the the, the cougars. 
yeah. <laughs> middle aged women. The, the female clientele <laughs> at, the, at the establishment. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, geez, wow, that's that's yeah. insane. You got to freaking have yeah. Dave Chappelle. Yeah, man, and it was like, all like, night. Long. It was so wild, and he was so cool, man. Like literally, it was just like I, I, my daughter was just born. Like I was one of those things. Like I was just like so that's surreal. normal like i was just like yo dude he was like here this is my daughter it's because it, that was the where one of the jokes is in there is like i was digging for my lighter i pulled out the one phone and i pulled out the other phone and he's like oh man you got side bitches don't you <laughs> I was like, no 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 it's like this one's for pictures and music this one's to talk to people and he's like oh okay he's like you lying man you lying and i was like no no it's like sure you know i shouldn't picture my daughter he's like oh hell yeah and then he started showing me pictures of his kids it was it was so like random That's so crazy. wild so it's like you know it's, it's like running into a pokemon in the fucking middle of the know, right into the wild, it's like what like, what's okay. going on like wild dave spell appeared <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool I, I was i was i was super pumped and he was like i said it was just the coolest dude in the world like i i, I don't think i've ever had a good encounter that well it was like damn there, has there been any other has there been any people that you did meet that were just like yeah <laughs> oh yeah uh, of course yeah um, i thought this guy was gonna be or lady either well way. i mean not necessarily did I, did I have high expectations but like i've been treated weirdly and bad like uh one time we were at we were this is why i was working with the wrestling company we were hosting or not hosting but we had a table at this overnight horror themed flea market right sounds so fucking That's great <laughs> but a lot of a lot of like the, uh, the guy that played the, the oompa loompa and willy wonka was there like there's some some forms of celebrities walking around and stuff hockey talk fans there and hockey talk man walks over to our table he's like oh he's like billy corgan's company huh he's like tell that motherfucker to call me i got good plans for his company and i was like this was going on for hours like I was, I was at some point. I was like, "Man, like get him the fuck away from us." <laughs> so I'm sitting there and me with my buddy Giovanni again, and we're like, "Oh, we're gonna go take a walk the floor, and check out the, the you know the merch and stuff like that." And then was, we both were like, "Oh, got a piss? Let's go to the bathroom." Honky talk man comes walking in behind <laughs> us, and he's just like. He's like, hey, Baba. He's like, you want to see my dick? And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> and like he was just so it was. I couldn't tell if he was <laughs> fucked up or like he was ribbing me. Like I just I, I don't know what the fuck was going on. But if Honky Talk Man is not on my uh <laughs> friendly oh list. My God. We got we got heat, honky talk. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was it was wild, man. But like the, the whole time he was just like, get me a job, get me a job. Hey, you want to see my dick? Get me a job. It was like, what the what fuck the... is wrong with you? <laughs> what did he say? What the hell? It, hell Did you see it, him after it, that it, or? Or no, oh no, we 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 were like I'm I'm done. Like I, I, I'm spent, man. Like I need a cigarette afterwards. Like this is crazy. Oh, <laughs> but he was like God. he was there. He had the big gold, like he not the intercot. Like he was just all over the place. He didn't have so, the, like oh he didn't have the actual no 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 I C title. He had the big W C W gold, which made no sense <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Just so, living his fun, dream. He's just fun times, man. I, like I've had, I've had, I've been to not throw everybody under the bus, but I've had some other encounters where I was like, ah, oh, this guy's an asshole, and like, I don't most wrestle, mostly wrestlers. Are you gonna just uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot of them were wrestlers. I mean, a few celebrities in between too, you know. Oh my God, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah, man, it was like it's it's crazy. But not everybody's everybody's flavor, you know. So I, I yeah. get it. It's it's. But Honky Talk Man was definitely one of those ones. I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now you you mentioned. Like before, you mentioned your mom too. Like she was helping out. Did she like? Is she into like the entertainment, uh, like wrestling and she loves and it. All stuff. She she loves it because I love it. She like she sees that like I'm passionate for it. She gets yeah. it. And uh, it was like you know like I was just getting started into it. I started talking to the so the guys that owned the company. They were they were great for the, the run, right? Until until yeah. everything blew up. It was it, much like everything, you know. It, it was it was fun while it lasted. Yeah. But uh, when she seen how much I was doing with it and what like oh like she know she like run Chicago like she's she's basically the Irish mafia here. Not, <laughs> 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 only jokes, only jokes. But uh, <laughs> but like if I needed like hey we need a venue down in this area like do you know anybody you know it was one of those things like yeah I could call somebody for you and like we'll get it set up and like so we we were doing a lot of stuff for them like that like. Eventually, it was like, "Hey, let's let's throw some money towards them and help them out, like booking people." And like, it, it was, it was the only way I was going to be able to get bigger attention on it, you know. So it was like, what we had a Kevin Nash coming for a show, 
And he was yeah. like, he's the smartest fucking dude in the room for bringing me in. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. Like, you know, but we were, we, so the show, like we, we were doing great. We uh, had a year under our belt. We were supposed to be on AMC. We filmed for a reality show. Oh, wow. uh, we were like nine episodes deep in the filming wow. and we were on our way to Minnesota for a zombie pub crawl wrestling show venues book just incredibles on their ddp uh <laughs> they were like it was it was crazy right uh, raven it was raven's like one of my good friends from his, all this which is wild uh, but on our way to minnesota for the zombie pub crawl the <laughs> amc crew is like literally with a camera in her face and they're like oh amc just canceled all reality programming like talking what? dead was gone like everything Jeez. so they're like hopefully somebody else can pick it up we're going to continue to film this weekend but hopefully we'll see what happens and that was kind of like the downfall at all once the reality show got screwed up yeah. uh was a lot of like bad shit came in the light from the the other two owners and things and we were like we're out like yeah. oh, i don't want to be attached <laughs> to this drama <laughs> i've dealt with enough shit growing up so, you know so it's like oh, i'm good geez. but but yeah, it was, it was it was a trip, man. Like I, I, I had a great time. I met a lot of great people. Uh, you know, I, 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 was, I made Pineapple Pete his first action figure. Like, wow, <laughs> this, is, this is years years down the line, man. Jeez. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Who I ran into, Cash Wheeler was part of our crew. Uh, run into him at every AW showdown. He's always like, "Hey, Bubba, what's up?" I'm like, "Hey, no, Bubba." <laughs> so it, 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 it's cool to see like the success of everybody that's that's my favorite part of doing anything is watching yeah. everybody grow like uh john schuyler who's on impact right now that guy is a hell of a talent even better person uh just just seeing all these guys that came from where i was you know yeah uh, and seeing them go up to do bigger and better things including myself you know it, it, it's it's awesome man yeah i was gonna say that you actually brought up a good point because i spoke to the uh the wrestling class like justin about about that he he said he likes to see people <clears throat> like flourish. Like he likes to like, you know, if, if he's working with somebody or he's friends with somebody, he likes to see them, you know, grow and get yeah. bigger. Do you think like now, cause we, we talked about like early 2014, 2015 social media wrestling wasn't like a huge thing. There wasn't like, you know, podcasts yeah. like crazy. There was like a few pages <clears throat> that I kind of, we spoke about. I kind of said like, you know, Chick Foley was one. He was one. Um, I think Extra Cooler at the time too. They were, they all came up around the same time. And there was a yeah. couple other uh, pages early in you know early in the Instagram days. And then obviously now it's like it's it's insane. It's like you know this it's everywhere. podcast yeah. streamers, it's literally everything, <laughs> us included. Do you think there's like? Do you like seeing like? Do you know anybody else besides like us and the like the Pod Foundation? Do you know anyone outside of that that's doing this? That's like, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. It was like not, not crazy, crazy good, but, uh, that Nick Houseman, you know, he, okay. he, he yeah. he's the, 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 the scrum guy, right. Yeah. Um, he, he okay. worked at the yeah. same company I did. So it was, it was cool to see him. I mean, when I first time I seen him at a media scrum on K, I was like, holy shit, dude. And I'm so happy for him. Like it's, it's the coolest thing. And he was one of the first guys that started doing like he he quit the company and then he started his podcast right afterwards. Yeah, and like he was he was helping out. Uh, I know he was helping out Cult and like now he's like the, the CM Punk, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the voice of the, he's the voice of the voice of the voiceless. Uh, so uh, it's but it's cool to see like anybody that I've ever came cross paths with. Uh, I mean, like I the over the moon salt girl that does the the cosplay. Like I've seen yep. her a few times at like these these oh, fan awesome. fests and stuff, and like she's. She's killing it, you know. Like I love yeah. seeing it, and like Chick Foley too. Like I, I followed Chick Foley on Twitter, God knows how long ago. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and that was like that was when I wasn't collecting actively. Like that was like, oh damn, that looks so cool, you know. And I was just checking out all this stuff. So I was like, I always kept up with it, even even when I wasn't watching fully. You know, yeah. I always I always tried to stay like toys wise too. Like you're walking down an aisle. You know, you're in Target to buy cat litter. You're like, oh shit, I'm gonna still check it out, even though I'm not buying <laughs> yeah. anything. But like, yeah, yeah. And as you can see, I still buy a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, but actually, good problems to have. <laughs> I actually had, um, uh, actually, I had, yeah, I had, um, Casey, uh, over the moon salt on, uh, I think, yeah, like, I think she was like in the, like the fourth or fifth maybe episode. And nice, I'm gonna, I'm actually have her back again. I think, uh, it's gonna be, but have her and Sheena on we're gonna do a uh we're gonna do like a halloween 
open mic episode because um she you know like she loves Halloween, she loves all things about it. Obviously, Casey with the costumes and stuff like that. She said she loves <laughs> it as well. So I kind of want to bring them two together. It'd be like the first time they're meeting each other too as well, which is which is pretty awesome. awesome. I think yeah, you know, I, like I told uh Sheena when I first started doing the show, one of my main one of the main things I wanted to do with this show is to highlight like women in yeah. in our like our community because we obviously you know you know Sheena you know Casey yeah <clears throat> like I have like I just had Hale Liz I'll, her her um episode will be out soon um I've had uh like I said Casey I've had Marie Shadows you guys have her she she was on the debate ones yeah um and the one non wrestling one which is uh Queen G she's she collects uh. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff, mainly Donatello stuff, but she's like, you know, with, you know, she's like a deal with Paramount and Nickelodeon and stuff like that. And she's doing commercials wow. and all stuff. So, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird seeing, like, like, cause I had her on once, like the first time. And then, like, a year later, she's like, yeah, I just went to the premiere of the, you know, Mutant Mayhem and I got to sit down That's with Kevin crazy. Eastman. And, you know, we're, you know, I have this thing with like Nickelodeon now where I'm doing like, you know, advertisements and all this stuff. I'm like, that's that's it's just insane it's seeing like you know people that you've interacted with and now they're starting to do like all these amazing things it's 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 awesome to see like yeah you just you just want everyone to like to win and i think i think i'm trying to get into this next part which i always bring up with everybody social media in wrestling yeah you've seen it i mean we talk i talk about it i, I was gonna go like on a huge rant on, on a <laughs> tonight, but we weren't able to about you know it's and I talked to a wrestling classic about this too. Like it's the wrestling fans not knowing what they want. Like they'll hate one thing, but then someone else would do that same thing, but they'll love it. Cause they love that person, but yeah. you just hated it on this side. But now you like, it's just, I don't, I just don't get the, like, especially now, like in the spot that we're in with the amount of we're spoiled now, don't. but the <laughs> amount of wrestling that we have, like impact GCW, New Japan, AEW, WWE, Defy, like you, this goes on. Like there's this NWA. There's like you can yeah. you can't go anywhere without like watching. You don't have to like watch every single thing. You can pick and choose what you like. So I don't get where the the complaining and all the negativity. Like where do you stand on that? Like the like it's a small minor. It's a minority of the you know of the wrestling community that you know speaks their negative. Yeah. Stuff. Like where do you stand on that? Like as a you know, as a podcast or as a content creator, because obviously you're out there looking at the stuff, the same things I am. Oh, of I, course, I see yeah. everything. I see the positive and the negative. I don't shy away from either. I like to see <laughs> both sides. So, like, where do you stand on like, uh, like the effect that like you know social media has on on wrestling and wrestling fans? Yeah, I th I think it's a lot of people just wanting to be heard, even if they're not right. You know what I mean? And I don't mean to say that negatively. I because yeah. I've probably said some stupid shit yeah. too. And God <laughs> yeah. forbid, don't no deep no deep dives on me, damn it. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, I don't know. It's, these these pe half of these people, a, a good portion of these people probably didn't grow up during the Monday Night Wars. Mm. And I, I have a feeling like they're just they've been and I'm not trying to say it's fed brain, I'm not trying to say it's tribalism. I just think that they were so accustomed to having that one thing you know like us having toys or us it's hard to go to a mom and pop shop now yeah when you don't get the same feeling you know what i mean like it's it's so when you see stuff that sure is exciting you know yeah edge signing the aw of course they're gonna shit on it you know of course they're gonna there's gonna be people it's like mom it was, I, i'd seen something it's like <laughs> it's like dad getting divorced from mom when she's <laughs> on her deathbed and it's like it's like, fucking calm down man <laughs> like it's not None of this is that serious. I've always been on the boat of like, just sit back and enjoy the ride, man. We are, well, you just said we are spoiled right now. We are in the, probably the biggest boom for pro wrestling. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like this is way bigger than the Monday Night Wars. And I, yeah. I, I, I imagine what the tribalism would have been if there was, you know, social media back, back then. then. Oh social media. God, yeah. Man. Like, God, I, you yeah, can I, only I, imagine, <laughs> but like, it's, it's insane. Like, I, but I, I understand where people do come from where they are like trying to stick up and be like, I was there for day one. I watched Roman Reigns debut and he is my tribal <laughs> chief. And it's like, and it's, it's some like 40 year old white guy that yeah. he doesn't belong in any tribes. He, like, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I, I love people, man. But the <laughs> wrestling fans are absolutely. Oh my God. 
it's mind boggling. It's, it's, it's their takes. It's, I don't know where half of these people get money. Like <laughs> well, I've always had these true. fan fests and I'm like, these guys have like three belts on and they're like, <laughs> you know, yeah, they're buying they bags that? of figures. And like, I was like, I can't even get a ticket to the show, man. Like, what, <laughs> what are you doing? And it, like, it, it's, it's, it's one of the most beautiful mind boggling sports uh, fandoms in the world. And it's, it's, but it's awesome too. Like I am one of these guys. I, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm one of the people that, all are. yeah, if, if, if I had the, the want to go like dress up as a wrestler and go to the shows, I would totally do that. Like mm. it's, you know, I, I used to go, you know, slick my hair back as we're going back to the Scott Hall. I'd pull the little thing down and yeah. put a toothpick in my mouth <laughs> and I'd be a nitro man with my dad. It was, it was a good time. And I love like, it's what we do. It's like, nobody should, we shouldn't, nobody should be attacking their own. You know, it's like. People, it's Star Wars versus Star Trek. You know, it's yeah. it's all the same. It's, it's it's baseball versus football. You know, yeah. my team's better. Your team sucks. It's that's what we got. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like I, it's like almost like you know when when you see like um like other sports fans like when 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 wrestling fans come into the conversation of like with other sports fans, it's like who like they're like these people are fucking crazy. Like wrestling fans <laughs> are like seen as like. Like toxic, crazy, yeah, barbarians. Like, and one thing is like one thing you won't do is talk about wrestling to like anything negative. Like one thing we'll all get together on. Yeah. Is, like, <laughs> if you attack us, we're gonna attack back. And like, yeah, you know, absolutely, like a rabbit thing, which is a good thing. That's but, what uh, we're wait. That's what we need. We need like a good like public moment where somebody shits on wrestling, so all of us could just come together and be like, yeah, we, nah, Naro. <laughs> yeah, we need like a. Uh, let me think. We need like a. Like a Stephen A. Smith or someone from like ESPN, yeah. like, completely <laughs> shit on. Then they will like, but it, even that you can't do that because now they're like doing we'll interviews with it. these guys, and they'll like, laugh about it and be like, "Yeah, and they're, like, <laughs> they're, like friends with, they're like friends with everybody." Like they, you know, like they show up on ESPN and do like the the sports talk and all. Yeah, stuff. And I mean, like even the, so you think about that. wrestling in its bubble, man. Seeing wrestling on ESPN it's that strange. is a hell of a, it's a hell of an accomplishment, though. Sports Illustrated, yeah, like, everything and like amazing. everything like. Anything that happens, like like this with Edge, we'll we'll, we'll yeah. keep it topical. Edge it was literally on everything. ESPN, Jade, uh, freaking Jade, Jade Sports was Illustrated, huge... all that stuff. Yeah, Jade. I mean, the Jade Cardgoal thing was absolutely insane, and it falls right into what you were talking about. It's like all the people that were watching from the sidelines with Jade were like, "Oh, she's terrible. She's she you know sucks. she's so green. She sucks." Blah blah blah. And like we're all like, "Yeah, we, we love Jade. Jade's great." Like, and if you've ever she's seen Jade bad. in person, you're like, "God damn." Jade is a presence of a human being, man. So, like, did you see her in person? Oh yeah, a couple oh, times, yeah. man. I was, I was, I was help. I helped uh, film some stuff for Jazzwares at one of the fan fests where they they debuted her one of three thousand shop AW figure, yeah. and like just seeing her, like being five feet in front of her, you're like, damn, man. Like, it's she's got presence. She has that it factor, no matter what. And like those WWE fans are like, look, we got Jade Cargo. On. It's, it's like. A, it's a- I, the other it's thing crazy. is like I don't yeah with the, I don't want to stay on the edge thing but like I see people saying like he should be WWE should remove him from from the Hall of Fame for yeah, like, like, what? What are you, you crazy man it's like and stuff like, like that that makes me so angry it's like well everybody goes to their about? extremes like that's that's their They're first all, it's yeah newsflash they all everyone's friends they all know each 100%. other they all talk to each other like if you're if I'm not sure what corner of like twitter or instagram but you'll see them all they'll be taking pic- they'll be at the same parties with each other like you'll see like yeah. freaking mjf hanging out with fucking cody Rhodes, and like <laughs> you'll be like you, you know, um bailey with freaking someone in AEW. it's like they yeah. all intermingle and they're all friends it's like well much much like us we all want to see this? each other succeed you know they yeah. want they 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 want their peers to succeed too they want their <laughs> friends they want everybody to do good and doesn't matter where they're gonna do it and right now it's the best time to go to do these things, do big changes like that. Yeah. Edge is doing the one of the coolest things in the world because he said, "Fuck it, I'm going to go to AEW now and just have fun." Yeah, because I like there's nothing left for me to do here. How can you be even slightly against that? And like not, reasoning, like what what else is there for Edge to do in WWE? Right, like guys done it all. No, no. Uh, I mean, story and the, the moment we got, yeah, the moment we got on Dynamite with him and Christian was amazing, man. It was so. <sighs> fun and like i love wrestling wrestling's so good like that and like yeah. even i listen i was at wrestlemania like i'm not, again i'm not a big wwe guy you know this and i thoroughly enjoyed the show it's not 
the kind of wrestling I'm really into. Yeah. It's not like, and I hate big arena shows like that, like, like being there. It's like pro- overly produced. Yeah, but it's like, like you know, I, I don't want to pay. I never want to pay over 40 bucks to sit, stare at a screen. And yeah. like, I do that enough with pay-per-view, <laughs> you know. So going to, you know, L.A. and spending, you know, the flight there. And thank thankfully, our, our homies over at Mattel were generous enough to hook us up with the ticket for the, you know, for the Saturday show. Yeah. It was beautiful, you know, and like. I, I've only been to a WrestleMania twice before that, and both were at the Allstate Arena, the Rosemont nice. Horizon, and it was it's a it was it's a completely different machine now. Like yeah. you, uh, Res- WrestleMania is like going to Disney on Ice for a whole weekend. Like yeah. it's insane. <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> but oh, back man. in the day, it was you know I like I was at WrestleMania 13, I was at WrestleMania 22. Like th- those were grittier type shows the pageantry wasn't as it wasn't the yeah. biggest spectacle of the world yet but it was still growing and doing good man like my fan fest for wrestlemania 22 was hillbilly gyms in the parking lot go meet hillbilly <laughs> <laughs> now it's now the, like the 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 I don't even call it access anymore the wrestlemania superstore or whatever the hell it yeah. is it's dude it i walking into that was its own show it was a production up the ass they had all this cool stuff you get to see the stuff on display you get to see the new figures you get to see the meet and greets all the titles the gear like it, it's it's overwhelming man for yeah and it, it blows my mind absolutely like, blows my mind like I said how could you be upset about like i said as just being a wrestling fan nowadays like how could you be upset with like with what's going on i mean obviously you know you love you love the people that you like and you don't want to see them go and all this type of stuff but I've seen sport like I, I've seen a tweet. Uh, uh, someone tweeted out like uh, they wish that like you know the NFL, the NBA, or or baseball was like you know wrestling in the sense where a legend can come back and play a game, or right. something like that. <laughs> like just strap just one game, just you know maybe the Super Bowl, maybe like you know Tom Brady comes back and plays on the a game uh, like a playoff game or something like that like, like his money in the bank like he gets to yeah. come in and t- <laughs> he gets one quarter <laughs> any quarter he wants for the rest of the season let's like, yeah. maybe like i, I would know, love it man yeah you know, like shannon sharp maybe he can come back and play a game or something like that like, <laughs> yeah. you get the legend you have like a legends deal and they you know, all the legends come back and uh they can play <laughs> like they hey, like, listen you know, man if i was like oh, I, wish great. We, I wish we could do that that's like we yeah. don't like we we get to see like dream matches like, because we always talk about like, oh, I wonder if this person will beat this person. Well, a lot of these guys are healthy now and you're actually getting to see it. You don't get to see yeah. that. And you don't get to see, like I said, I, I hate to bring up Tom Brady, but Tom Brady and Joe Montana, <laughs> you don't get to see them, you know, battle it out on the field. How awesome would it be, though? You know, oh, yeah, like, how crazy would it be? They just, yeah. You know, they throw on their, their pads, they throw on their jerseys and just one <laughs> game. They just like go back and forth. Like, who's the best quarterback? That's well, like, I, I like I, mean, I don't follow <laughs> basketball a lot, but I love playing the basketball video games. Like, That's another thing. I, dream every time I'm 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 going to be the 96 Bulls, 97 yeah. Bulls, no matter That's what, because it's my shit. But like, I loved playing against the Heat. I loved playing against the, the, the new age Bulls, you know, like Derrick Rose and <laughs> yeah. Michael Jordan going at each other, man. It was intense. It was, it was like, you get a lot of that fandom behind you and you're like hell yeah dude like this is i imagine if they did that with other sports it would be insane <laughs> and what i'm saying is we get to as wrestling fans we get to we get to actually experience that stuff so yeah. we should be happy that you get to see it like you get to actually get to see like oh what if this person would face you want to see rob van dam face somebody in AEW or wwe he's still yeah. alive he can move he can and, put him in the ring damn well good it's gonna, man yeah. it's gonna happen <laughs> Shawn well, Michaels, it's, it's not, not so much he's a uh, you know He's a little old now, but I mean, we will keep that. We'll, I'm sure if he shaved, maybe he, he yeah, knock it out shaved, one more time. He might, he might be able to get that. Hey, get listen, that leg up. What was what was the what was the show when him and uh, Triple H fought oh, King Undertaker in Saudi, Saudi Arabia show? Oh, yeah, what was that? Was it, was uh, it Crown the, Jewel or one of those? It was a, I think it was a Crown Jewel, but like oh, he was boy. the best looking one in the match. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, he looked he, he looked good. Yeah, but yeah, was... <laughs> he, he was still doing his like. But at some point, like it was that was, that was like an embarrassment, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> But but HBK did look still like he could he could still go, but he's like, oh, I'm good. I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's upset. That was upsetting. Yeah. Hunter, yeah. we're we're out. We're we're <laughs> Kayfay, brother. He, he, he did do that at one point in the match. If you go back yeah. and watch it, like they're like at the like he's in the corner, he's just like, Yeah, this is we're, we're, we're too old for this. We can't, yeah. we can't do this. Well, anymore. I mean triple H tore his quad like that. Right, was, like that two was, minutes into the match. Kane's mask falls off. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, just God. like the, the <laughs> And I think the greatest that's, clusterfuck, man. <laughs> and I, 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 I want to move on to the, my next question, but I, I, I think it kind of like people think of that when they see like you know Edge, 
go over to AEW where it's like, it's obviously he, he made the decision. He's a grown man. He knows what he can get into. He knows what he can do, but like yeah. you get the people it's AEW is not, you know, WWE in the sense the wrestling is a little bit more, a little bit more uh, stiff. We'll say. Yeah, like of it's, course. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's 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 a lot of different. It's a fast pace. It's 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 crazy. It's a lot of different styles. So I think like that's where I think people's mentalities are coming from. Like oh, something might happen to him. But he <laughs> made the decision himself. He signed the paper. He knows yeah. what he can do. He knows he can get. I want to see him get in the ring with Luchasaurus and get, I'm, see him get choked. I want I to see wait, him fight uh, Hobbs at some yeah. point. Oh man, could you imagine? We're gonna get a lot of good matches out of it. Like even when Punk came back, like he had such a good run, like in the before he got hurt. Oh, yeah. like, he was he wrestled everybody, and it was like we got so many good moments out of it, like the sad hook, you know, like all that shit. That, I mean that that lasted forever, and Dude. like that's the cool thing about it. But it's that's I'm here for more door, people coming man. in. Yeah, <laughs> somebody from New Japan. That's all I'm saying. It's gonna be. Like, he, he, he was Okada. teasing Okada. Oh my god, I, I Dude, as you know, Okada, talking about where it. Where the hell would you ever even? Him and Sting, yeah. like watching Edge and Sting stand in the ring together was like wow. surreal in itself. Yeah, and that's the, on, that's people. I mean, Stop for, for people there. like us who are Jeez. smart, you you silly marks, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, we're, we're, we're just we get to that's enjoy exciting. it though. And that's Goosebumps the thing. Right like, now, just thinking of that, like pe- people are gonna look back at it and be like, "This was the greatest moment of yeah. our fandom ever," and it really is because it's like how many times do we get to see Sting wrestle again? Oh, after man. that WWE run, and it's been it's been beautiful. Yeah, and put his body beautiful. on the line too, like diving yeah, no, off the he, top of the table. He's the new Jack. <laughs> he's the new <laughs> he, Jack. He, he was like, I'm, "I'm quitting the Hall of Fame. I'm going to be New Jack," and he did Speaking it very well. Jack, yeah, he oh, almost, yeah. I, yeah. I think he wanted to put me in a match once. Uh, oh, I was in uh, New Jersey. It was WrestleMania. Uh, I feel like it was WrestleMania. It was the one where was it 28 or 29? It was there was a Rock and Stone Cold with the main event. But we went to the pro wrestling syndicate show. It was in Jersey. And uh we went to the there was a meet and greet before the actual it was a super card that they had. And it was uh it was uh it was a meet and greet. Um uh what do you call it? Uh New Jack was there, John Morrison was there, who else? Uh Iron Sheik. Oh, nice. so, thank, thank you, Bubba. Thank you, Bubba. I was like, You're the greatest world champion that ever lived. He's like, Thank you, Bubba. Thank you, Bubba. <laughs> I was like, You're right, but no. Love so, it. like, I, I take a picture with uh, with New Jack, and he's like, Dude, he is top hat, like, really nice. Like, dude's like dressed like freaking, like, I was like, This, this is a New Jack. This dude's like freaking fucking three piece <laughs> dude, like freaking Rolex, like jewelry. I was like, Holy shit. So, we take a picture together, and he's like, He's like, oh man. He's like, hey, you wrestle? And I'm like, I'm like, no, no. And he's like, he's like, huh? I was like, I, I, I walked away. I was like, oh, thank, nice, nice, nice to meet you. I thought he wanted me to like, I thought he was gonna ask me to be like in a spot. In the yeah. <laughs> later the next night, he faced our Necro Butcher. Oh um, hell yeah! So like, and I'm in the front row. I remember. I, I actually have the DVD. If you go on, a, I think it's Pro. It's Supercard 2013. Um, just look oh, at, for sure, yeah. Look, look it up on YouTube. New Jack's retired. You'll see me right in the front row at the guardrail. That's Dude, so like cool, going man. at it. <laughs> White tubes, uh, chairs, blood all over the place. They're fighting outside next to the guardrail. New Jack grabs fucking Necro Butcher, throws him like over, like almost on, like on me. You just see me like <laughs> the whole front row just get up and just fucking punch me back. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, I'm just, stuck. I got Necro like, Butcher on me. Like, <laughs> yeah. Chairs have blood all over them. And they're just that's wild. Them. I was like, holy shit. Anyway, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, YouTube that. I think it's you, you dodged a bullet working with uh New Jack, though. Oh don't, man, don't, dude, don't. I did yeah, I I I because he was looking <laughs> me up and down. I was like, oh man, he's in a fucking ass. Like, <laughs> he starts getting like, you right me there. as a spot or some shit. A stabbing <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, nah, I'm all, I'm, I was like, thanks, nice meeting you, man. I, I, I and then I met and then I went, went to talk to Lita. She was at the signing too, but but uh, that was pretty cool. But that's I want to awesome. get into, <laughs> I want to get into uh your your business dealings that you have. Cause you kind of mentioned like jazz wares and Mattel and all that stuff. Yeah. So like, how did you, how did you get into like, you know, get in, get in there. You're pretty much like a <laughs> guy with like, jazz, I'm not sure. But I will get to Mattel, but I'm not, cause I'm not sure where you are at Mattel, but jazz wares. Definitely. I mean, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, and all that, but no, that, like, you know. uh, I, st- all during pandemic, man, I, st- I was, the line was announced. Uh, I don't remember how I found out that magic worked on the line, but magic almost they're, they're their lead designer. And okay. Like I, I was just 
shooting them up like dude i can't wait to see these this is awesome i'm so pumped blah blah, blah. yo they're not in stores yet you know <laughs> be that guy like yeah man i'm waiting on my cody Rhodes right now i don't know what the hell's going on but uh yeah i just i, I was uh again i was kind of out of collecting wwe stuff uh just because it was like over it you know like yeah there was nothing i, I had uh, as many elites as i needed you know I, I have my my house second floor is all wrestling memorabilia basement is all wrestling memorabilia like it's <laughs> I'm, I'm in a, i'm in an oreo of <laughs> normality right on this floor and it's taken over here too but uh yeah i was just kind of texting him hitting him up you know like man this is great blah 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 and i used to take photos of my figures when i was a kid and i started like getting back into it i was like man i get an iphone i can do this shit from my living room like i don't <laughs> i'm gonna go anywhere this is great <laughs> so i started getting i wouldn't say i'm great at it but I, I take some cool photos you know i get some good concepts in my head i'm like this is gonna look great yeah uh so i remember specifically that the darby's fi first figure came out i took a cool picture he's holding the skateboard behind his head and magic yeah. was like can I post this on my own page? And I was like, yeah, dude, like what, what the hell go for it? Like knock your socks off. So he posted it and was just like, dude, he's like Mike Belcaster took this photo and it was like amazing. He's like, is this really oh, made shit. me realize how awesome of a figure I made? And I was like, damn, I was like, that was very flattering for me, dude. I was like, yeah. dude, thanks, man. Like, he's like, no, no. He's like, thank you. Uh, so I started taking more pictures. Cause like, he was always like, dude, do it. Go for it, man. Like, hell yeah. And, uh, you know the talent started sharing them and like cody would retweet me He'd be like oh this is awesome you know I, like I, on valentine's day i took a photo of him and brandy and i was like <laughs> the grandson of the plumber and his beautiful bride and like he was like you know he retweeted with hearts and he's like dude this is awesome he's That's like awesome. thank you for i appreciate the photo thank you for taking it and he's like rocking and i was like cool man uh then I took one of Orange Cassidy, and this was the one of the worst photos I took, <laughs> which is the, the the funniest thing. Like I was in my upstairs, and like I have boxes laying around, so I just shut the light off, so it was just orange, like kind of in the ring. Yeah, and I put he had this cool picture on Instagram where it was his face <laughs> with lasers going through it. You know, like it, yeah. it was like a very trendy looking Instagram photo, and I was like, yeah, man, it'd be cool if I could do that. You know, instead of instead of taking a picture of him like doing the orange punch or something like yeah yeah i want to i want to i want to imitate his life with my shit so yeah. i did one with you know the rainbow lights Absolutely. going through it the lasers and you know hand in the pocket thumbs up and jeremy padauer great great dude awesome friend uh he shared it he's like this is amazing and orange cassidy the next day i wake up and he's like didn't i just take this picture and it's my photo there yeah and i was like holy shit like he just shared my thing <laughs> 30,000 likes on the photo like I'm like what the fuck is going on <laughs> and then like I you know I'm not big on trying to see who's looking at stuff but I clicked yeah. on the likes and it's like Tony Khan liked it all these other guys liked it so oh, I was like shit. damn I was like I did something really cool there it's like so that was I took another one with like Santana Ortiz and I found one of their promo shots where Santana's on a chair he's got the flag hanging down and like Ortiz is standing behind him like this and I, I you know I replicated it again same response people loved it I was like, oh shit um uh, so Jeremy Padauer is sharing everything like this is the cleanest Kenny Omega photo. Blah, blah, blah. And like, I was like, oh, this is, it's like I love Jeremy from the classic superstars line. Like that really brought me into collecting yeah. hardcore. Yep. Like, I, you know, you're kid collecting, but this is like teenager going in the twenties. Like I need everything. Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was chatting him up there in pandemic magic. Uh, and I met Greg uh, Mitchell who's on their team. And it was just like, all these guys were so cool and uh chris metzger who makes your he's the you know the head designer for packaging he's a stand-up guy and he's like oh man he's like i would he's like i want to i want to meet you he's like you are fucking like so intrigued <laughs> i was like sure <laughs> uh, so he was like if you could fly out to double or nothing and if this was 2021 i want to say it was um, i don't remember it was with the, the first one back from pandemic in vegas yeah uh so i was i was like he's like if you could fly in you're, you got a welcome place to hang out like we, we awesome. like I, I, he's like i'm gonna be busy he's like so it's like you're I'm, i don't want you to be my puppy dog or my shadow or anything but he's like <laughs> we can hang i was like oh I'm, i was like i'm a goddamn adult i can handle it so first night i get there i'm like hell yeah I go to dynamite i get back to the bar afterwards uh metzger's like oh i'm gonna be there like later on in the night i think my flight gets in at like nine and i was like cool 
I first West Coast wrestling show ever was yeah. that Dynamite, and I was like, it's seven o'clock and the show's over. <laughs> like I was I know, that's so I was so like mind blown by like that concept. I was like, oh cool, I'm gonna go walk around the casino. And, like I see all you know talent going through, and I was like, this is crazy, absolutely crazy. And I walk up to the bar, and like Matt's was like, oh yeah, I just got here. And I was like, cool. Like I'm walking through, and I'm like that you know i meet aw's marketing team i'm meeting jeremy Penauer in person and like it was and he was like oh shit like bellcaster you know it was, it was like it was <laughs> That's awesome. it was really cool and like you know it was, uh and i was like i was there so i was like if you guys need any help like i'm gonna be happy to, you know, like if you need some extra muscle or anything like just let me know so because i'm gonna be hanging out anyway like you might as well yeah. use me <laughs> so you know I, I got the help set up the the fan fest display and stuff like that and they had a really good like they, they were so welcoming and so cool and I got to meet everybody, shoot the shit with them. Like, uh, like obviously they seen my photos, so they knew I could pose a diagram of figures yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. at least <laughs> half decently. So that, that worked out good. But um, yeah, uh, Chris got the whole deal set up. It was like, we'll get Fig Night Live at you know Fan Fest. So I did the whole That's weekend it. there. Yeah. Like, I was, yeah, Even so that. it was like that big Fig Night in Vegas, man. It was it was cool as hell. <laughs> so that, like, and then it's just been every show since i've been like if you guys need something holler i'll be there no matter what like i, I don't care i was like i got miles i can take a plane right to vegas <laughs> <So Yeah. laughs> poor me i have to spend a week in vegas watching wrestling yeah, and no. <laughs> playing with toys like <laughs> oh no <laughs> but uh yeah it's, it's it's kind of been like that and i just i i, I love being around the man like, like it, that's another thing like I, I was working wrestling for so many years so yeah I, i'm easy to handle talent i'm easy to help people like they hey we need sammy guevara go find him like okay you know <laughs> give me a pass i'll i'll go take care of your <laughs> shit <laughs> so it, it's it's cool and like i got to do so many really amazing things. like this is if i could tell my childhood self what i'm doing now yeah i i, don't, I would i would be like get the fuck out of here who are you you're lying to me like this, this is i never thought this was an attainable thing to do you know and now i'm doing so much of it like it's podcasting wrestling going to shows hanging out you know, being being around all the talent and stuff like it's a dream come true and i like i i absolutely couldn't be happier like i'm so i don't even know like i'm so proud of where i came from because like i had a rough childhood growing up i had a rough you know a couple years uh you know when my brother and my dad passed away i was like i, I was lost as hell i didn't know what to do anymore you know like i yeah. just like literally was stuck and this literally saved me and became everything i ever wanted it to be like even when i was working in wrestling with the independents like it was fun yeah it was it was it was cool but it was never where i envisioned myself right so now i'm kind of like I'm kind of working in the figure life. I'm kind of working in the wrestling life. I get yeah. to do the podcast. I get I get to do everything I've ever wanted to do, and then some. And I'm I, I'm I'm still at a loss at how to explain how grateful I am to be yeah. in this space. And like even like I'm telling you, the Mattel thing was insane because like we got an official email from WWE. It was like it was by request of Mattel, we'd like to invite you out to WrestleMania. And like I, I printed it out. I'm framing that shit. I'm like, I, I, was, in, <laughs> I was in tears. Like I was like, holy shit! Like that, that. I mean, what, what, what is the greatest? Like you get to go tour Mattel's design center. And That's like, crazy. John from Ringside. It's like I've been doing Ringside for so many years, and I've never done this before. This is crazy. And I was like, what the fuck? Really? So like I'm, wow. I'm, yeah, and I'm walking the same hallways with you know steve ozer bill mckenna you know john from ringside uh every damn wrestling influencer out yeah. there <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was it was so mind-blowing man and like it that happened live on fig night me and tom both thought steve ozer was pulling our leg because he's like oh he's like wrestlemania is coming up it would be cool to see you guys there and i was like yeah. oh yeah that would be cool and then Chad emails us the next day. He goes, oh, you guys might want to see this because <laughs> they, they sent the invite to the tavern email. And I was just like, what? Yeah, that's so that was that was me going, all right, I need to figure my shit out, get out there right away and just do it because it once in a lifetime thing. And it was amazing, man. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. That's uh, did did Tom didn't did Tom go? No, oh, no. it was no. I, I was so. Uh, I, I I couldn't believe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, even man, it. I was, was like, what? Day. No. And like, it was, it was, 
I'm I'm a toy guy. Like I'm, it's not just wrestling. I've I love collectibles. I'm really into it. So walking around seeing like this is the very first Hot Wheel like in oh, front yeah, of you, like yeah. not on you know a screen. Like you're looking at the first Hot Wheel, That's like right. seeing how they do everything. Like my daughter's big Barbie people. Like I. I got into it too, you know. Like I'm like, oh, we gotta go find this Barbie. We gotta yeah. they have a SpongeBob <laughs> drop for the for the Barbie shirts. We gotta go find it, you know. Like so, walking through those hallways and seeing those things and like, uh, 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 just flabbergasting, like just absolutely mind blowing, man. And it was like I felt like I was like in Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, that's like insane. if I touch the wrong thing, like a trap's gonna go off. <laughs> I'm gonna be thrown under the bus. But it was it was amazing. Like even even like Sam Roberts, you know, he's been on the the debate a few times, yep. and he's been on Fig Night a few times. Just meeting him in person, like it was, it was like, oh, yeah. Sam, like he's like, oh shit, what's up, dude? Like you know, you're like, <laughs> all right, like this is wild, man. So like it was, it's just been a blessing, man. I'm I'm very very thankful for everything, and a lot of it comes from you know doing this, and I can't say that enough. Like yeah, having magic on Fig Nights, amazing. Having Chris come on, having. Ozer and all these people, Bill McKenna, Bill, Bill McKenna follows me. Like it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Like he, he popped up at the AW fan fest. He was like, uh, the star cast that was just this past month, you know? And okay. he was like, he was like, Hey, is there any cool toys in there that I should be looking, <laughs> looking out for? And I was like, no, no, like, not at all. Like, this, over there. Yeah. What's he doing? Like, this, is, this is not it. Get some but it, there was, there was an awesome moment. And I wish I would have gotten a picture of it, but Bill McKenna's talking to Magic and the Jasper's team, and then Matt Cardona comes walking out. He's like, oh, no. And I was like, <laughs> they're all just sitting there talking. I was like, hey, hey, guys. I was like, calm down. You got three of the greatest wrestling toy designers in sure. one square right now, and they all laughed at it. And I was like, you should – like, that should have been a photo somewhere. I think it would, it would have been I like, think – did they take a picture together? They better have. <laughs> I, think they, wait, I, think it's, I think they went over to the Mattel one. or something. It was something – I yeah. see a picture of uh, – it was like they're like what? it was like I figured what the caption was. It was basically like what the hell's going on here? It was like, <laughs> like, two different like the rival companies or whatever. But it, it, it like awesome, it dude. just that is awesome. Like and like I love little shit like that. Like you know, and then he's walking by, he's checking out the dome that we put together the day before, and it's like again check out the figures, man. They're all yeah. friends. They don't hate yeah. each other. <laughs> nobody, nobody. Like, hates Jeremy each probably other. calls Bill. And they talk to each other. They're like, "Hey, what's going? What are you, what are you coming out next year? What do you? What's going on? What? Do, what let's not release it because they have to kind of like." know each other's business in order to like, yeah well you know, magic work, used to work at like, mattel so him and yeah. bill are close and like every time i like if i'm in vegas bill's in vegas because he's like i love wrestling and i want to come to vegas for a week and like you know, yeah. it's like oh no totally understandable man so i've crossed paths with them a lot and it's just been he's a really cool dude and he's from chicago so he knows like his mall was my mall he used to go to my toys r us my kb toys he gets it you know so that's cool to have that kind of what do we you going to super dog tonight? We're gonna go get a hot dog. Yeah, man. Like hit me up. We'll go through. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna have, to, it's I'm cool. have to stick I'm gonna have to stick with the uh with the tavern side of things because uh you know, <laughs> she Sheena, Sheena has uh has some heat with Bill. So. Oh. <laughs> I will ask about this off, I've been, off air. <laughs> I've been trying, we've been trying to uh no, we, I've been I've been trying to, you know, mend fences and try to, you know, give a good name to the you know, Chick Foley show. We have Steve Steve loves uh the Chick Foley Twitter. He's always you know, always retweeting stuff. Oh, hell yeah. Out and stuff like that. Steve's so, great, man. Love, uh, love Steve. I know Jeremy. Bill's, Bill's, Bill's very quiet, though, on his own. So yeah. it's not like negative, probably. He's probably yeah. just like, oh, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, no, we had, uh, what else? I think, yeah, one year we did, uh, Jeremy actually helped us do the Chick Foley toy drive for one of the, one oh, of the Christmas Eve Christmases. Nice. He ended up like donating like a ton of toys to like. That's super cool. Which is pretty sick. So yeah. So yeah. He's uh, uh Jeremy loves uh he he loves the Chick Foley show with the and she and I how can you not stuff, so. come on no Jeremy's but, uh, great he... <laughs> yeah we just need to get Bill we just need to get Bill back on board I'm not yeah. sure how but we'll do it I'm gonna that's my mission is to get Bill <laughs> back in, in, the, in the good graces they have to meet up with maybe I'll like say hey Bill you want to come on over Mike hey she you want to come on and just like have him on the <laughs> screen yeah, just just merge the mega blind powers date, man just blind date it up that's, that's all no you know you can't go nowhere I'm yeah. not letting you guys know no but um. <laughs> but yeah no that's awesome that you get to like and it's not like you know you, you got it on your own merit you got it on your own you know your own yeah, talent 100 yeah and, and it looks you, like that's you know, the coolest shit in the world pictures and it, it like kind of you know snowballed into this like big thing which is pretty it, it, i mean it's awesome just like just to think about like how you know you just tell the story and how like 
how this all happened and how everything very organic out. yeah and it's like it, that's then i to circle it all back the improv the yeah. stand-up it all helped like hey can you interview you know sammy Guevara about his new ringside toy fuck yeah, yeah. like i'll go bring him by one two three ready let's go boom hi i'm mike belcaster from turnbuckle tavern you know and it's just it's it it clicks instantly and you're like yeah you, you go into the mode you're like all right i got this and they're like i don't know how you do that <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what i do man that's <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh i was gonna you go back to one more thing so like yeah please. you did say like your um so your father you said it was like you know how how in how how like in, influential was he in your like wrestling oh. fandom man uh they my parents took me my first i was born in december of 1987 my first wrestling show which i still have the ticket stub was in january of 1988 and wow. dustin rhodes was on the card uh <laughs> super cool it was, it was a wwf uh like superstars show uh, at, the, at the rosemont horizon and just ever since uh, I, I i mean ever since i remember it's always been around because like my brother was into the Hasbro's and the LJN's. I was yeah. on the tail end of Hasbro collecting. Uh, so he's, you know, we had him in the house. I got his toys when he was like, Oh, I like, you know, cool shit now. And, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that wrestling toys are like, okay, like I play with them. Yeah. Okay. Right. So and all of his friends were into it. So, uh, I got into it just naturally like that. And kind of, uh, I remember my, like my first live show experience was Hogan was fighting Bundy. We were like third row. I must have been like four or five, right? And like baby, still baby. Uh, yeah. Maybe even younger. I think it was maybe three. Uh, red and yellow Hulkamania shirt, like a yep. rock and roll and like full blown into it. And Bundy came over and we were like third row. Hogan gets thrown in the guardrail and Bundy, you know, does a nice stiff punch to him. Hogan's gushing blood. And I was like... <laughs> I remember grabbing onto my mom, like, is she going to be okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what's going on? Um, and then it was just like me and my dad's thing from there on out. Like, with my dad and my brother, they they bonded over music. And me and my dad bonded over pro wrestling. And it was every every Monday night, it was either our house or we were at my grandma's house. Channel 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock was WCW time. Monday Night Raw comes on at 8. It's channel yep. flipping time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Got really into it. Uh, it was huge, huge. I mean, we went to everything: uh, WCW shows, uh, WWF shows, uh, ECW. Uh, never, never did like the indies until later on. But like, I mean, the one of the last pay per views I took my dad to was a TNA Bound for Glory here. Uh, yeah, and just, it was always one of those things. Like, hey, hey man, you want to go hang out, watch wrestling? Hell yeah! Like, even when my parent my parents split up, I was like. 17 ish you know and was yeah. like still going over to my dad's you know apartment and watching pay-per-view <laughs> or <having laughs> him over at my place and you know watch pay-per-views and it was it was it was just always something we were into and like i used to like he would take me out of school and i'd go to work with him and on our way back we'd be like hitting up kb toys toys r us he, would, <laughs> he was he was the worst influence on me because he was like i want you to have what you want yeah you know yeah, and exactly. it was like <laughs> it was like all right, so I would be like, while he's doing work, I'd be on their work phone, like calling KB Toys, like, "Hey, you guys got too cool in yet? No, okay, I'll call you back tomorrow. <laughs> click, you know, like, pick up another phone, like Toys R Us. Hi, do you guys got a Scotty Two Hotty figure? Oh, no, all right, click. You know, it's like you're bouncing back and forth. Like I, I used to call the stores, and he was such a good dude for taking me everywhere, like yeah. everywhere. And he was he went above and beyond. Like we we weren't. You know, we weren't wealthy. We were he worked he worked at a warehouse job and but he took care of me. Like I days I'd come home from school and like you know, WWF attitude would come out on his way home from work. He would stop at the KV Toys, pick yeah. me up the game, you know, and it was like he always looked out for me like that. It was it was cool, man. Even to a point like we were making our own wrestling accessories for the toys. <laughs> he would help me build stages and like uh you know, it, he was he was cool, he was creative, man, and it was it was really cool to experience that with him I, like it, I, one of my favorite memories is him falling asleep there and i think it was raw or smackdown and vince did the turn and, i'm gonna poison the, the my own creation with the nwo and i'm like i'm slapping him i'm like wake the fuck up man like, nwo's coming to chicago and like i was there for that first raw yeah i, I got the truck piece from when the nwo <laughs> ran the rock over i have a the, the kenworth side of the truck and it's autographed by hogan and nash and like it, it's crazy man like it's just always been 
part of my life. And yeah. like, I mean, every, every week, I, I don't think I've ever skipped watching it. Even when I fell out of it, it would still turn it on mm-hmm. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Be like, what's going on over here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I think of this, I think of the same way in the sense where, you know, my father, when he, uh, we, we used to, uh, we want every, every Monday night raw, every nitro flipping back and forth and stuff like that. I think it's just something like even now, like in great, even though like, you know, Raw isn't the greatest, you know, show to watch right now. It's not the, yeah. not like it was back in the, you know, the attitude era. I still put it on because it's like ingrained in me. I think it's like a thing where, you know, it's something I used to watch with my father every Monday night. And uh, it just, it's just continue on. I maybe yeah. my son watches it now too. He like, I mean, he loves, oh, he loves wrestling. The best. Yeah. So he like, <laughs> he's like really into it. So like that, that definitely helps. But like, I think it's, it's, it's crazy how like, you know, you know, it wasn't really like my mom wasn't really into wrestling. She got into it with like, you know, she was around it. She wasn't into it. She didn't get yeah. into it. Obviously, like everybody else, Monday Night Wars happened. Everyone's <laughs> loving, you know, Stone Cold and The Rock and all that stuff and Mick Foley and everyone's like, you know, that's when they like brought like the casuals in for the most part. But it was always like it was always me, my father, my uncle as well. It was yeah. just always us, like from the early like, early eighties, late eighties to the nineties. Like, just remember, like, you know, my father, like, loving, he loved uh, Bobby the Brain Heat and, like, on commentary. Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was the funniest, like, dude ever. Like, he loved, he loved, uh, it was a uh, Bash and Booger. Yeah, remember, yeah. Uh, Bash and Booger. Hell yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he loved when, uh, uh, what would he call it? Um, Bobby the Brain Heat was like, you know who I pick? I pick Booger to win. <laughs> so he, he always thought that was like the funniest like thing. I'm like, that's such a corny joke. Why'd you think I... <laughs> it's not even funny at all. But like just like stuff like that. He loved all the uh like the uh like the goofy, silly side of things. But uh it's cool. Yeah, he, he's one that brought me, yeah, he brought me into uh into wrestling mainly because you know he's from the south, so I yeah, I started watching like the you know mid south and all that stuff. So uh, those were all my stuff, you know, though. Yeah, and, uh, you know, junkyard dog, butch reed. Road when he was uh when he was you know young and young and thriving and stuff like that young so, and plumbing yeah, yeah I, I grew up I I grew up watching that and like the Von Erics and all that stuff so like That's that awesome. was my first foray into wrestling before you know the WWF yeah. at the time so dude and bro- the just just it, coming back to it with the with the kids thing like you you see it now when your kids watch oh, it with you and like how how beautiful is it like my two daughters oh. watch with me every week my nephew was he I, I have custody of my nephew. Uh, he 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 was super into it growing up. He's thirteen now, so he's kind of like, like eh, yeah. But he's like still like every yeah. time I get a new toy, he's like, oh, what do you? Is it so dope? <laughs> it's like dope, dude. Like, oh, just, can you buy me that Adam Cole? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just show him, just show him uh, something cool, and he'll uh, he'll be right back and show him. Oh, he loves in uh, Darby. He's <laughs> so ecstatic. Like he's like, man, you get to go to these shows with oh, people. That's a, yeah, like, see, that's like this. He's like, what a fucking trip, dude! And like, like he, he gets how like, important meet it these is. Guys, and... talk to him. Talk to yeah. these, like, all the ladies and stuff like that, and the all the superstars and all the movers and shakers trip, and stuff. Yeah, um, man. Um, always, actually, you know what? One more question. The last question, please. If you, I, yeah, absolutely, if you listen man. to the show, I always give this last question. If you were to uh, bring somebody back, because we kind of talked about this, you, you know, you bring it, you bring your nephew back into wrestling. Right, he's yeah. he, he's he was a watcher of it. Now he's like, nah, I'm not really into it. I'm you know, I'm, you know, I'm into girls now. However, however that yeah, goes. oh hell, you know, of we're, course, we're, we're guys. It happens we're to the best ones. of us. It happens <laughs> to the best of us. Um, so if if you were to bring him back into into the fold, like man, what match are you gonna show him to bring him back to bring him back into? The love of Revel- since it, since we're using him as an example, yeah, you might have to go more current. You can't. You might not be. Yeah, I think it's going to be more back. current. Or but, you can go but before I'll, his time too. That's another thing. Hey, I'll I'll throw I'll throw it both ways, right? All so, right. Uh, for like so my grandpa's really he's he's watching AW. He's never watched wrestling my entire time. Okay. The guy's ninety years old. <laughs> <laughs> he's like that that goofy shit. And now he's like, he must oh, like that's more, awesome. Huh? That's what you do. No, he <laughs> loves it, man. And like he watches every week now. And it's I'm I'm not even there with him. I was like, so that's crazy. <laughs> he just knows the AEW like logo so he's like oh it's on cool you know and it's like so he gets to watch it but like uh one of my first times falling in love with it and this is what brought me into it and this is what i showed my nephew the first time i like he was not you know five and eating boogers and (laughs) not knowing what he was watching except for two guys beating the shit out of each other but um it was razor ramon and Shawn michaels ladder match you know and i thought 
for me as a kid being his age, seeing Razor walk under the ladder, you know, uh, hands yeah. out doing this, do, slicks yep. the hair back, does the toothpick, like what what a cool dude like where you don't get cooler than that and then you no, get this awesome right. match yeah and you're like the, the shining like the old school nobody like i love current day product but the old wrestling when the camera would hit the light the right way with the title hanging down yeah. you get that beautiful shine like you don't see oh, that yeah. shit anymore you know and it's just like i loved it like that i was hooked i was like what is this i'm just sign me up i'm all in dude so i showed him that match but uh bringing it back was forbidden door you know my, my kid he's in the Fortnite, like or not not even now he's even Fortnite's not cool enough for him like he's <laughs> he's too cool for school uh but he walked out while we were watching forbidden door and he was obsessed with danielson versus offspray like Ooh, obsessed okay. like f- like heard final countdown he's like what the hell are you watching <laughs> sat down watched the whole match was like whoa and like cool stuff man like and he was like man I, like so it's still much like uh, like i see it from my perspective like he's like oh I, it's kind of not cool but yeah. he still loves it you know what i mean and like that's the, like he's got all his figures lined up in his room I mean, like he doesn't try to hide it or anything but he's yeah. just like yeah i'm putting all my aw stuff up now because like you, you, i see you at the shows now it's cool like, <laughs> you know? so I'm like yeah there you go about it like it's I mean, it's, I, I love the pageantry and the characters from pro wrestling, but those, those physical matches, like an Osprey versus Danielson, like that—that's like the deep dive reading reading the whole novel. You know, like <laughs> like I got the cliff notes here, and I could watch all the Hogan matches, and it's sure it's great, but like you go watch this; these two guys literally beat the piss out of each other. For the love of it, they're like their best friends, and they're slapping <laughs> big men, slapping meaty men, man, and <laughs> like it's it's poetry. Like that's uh, like wrestling, such an artistic uh, form of entertainment, and it's so beautiful when it when it's done on the highest of high platforms and it's done well. I I could sit there and watch it on loop. You know, I could yeah. I could put that Danielson Osprey match on a what what do they call those those NFT like frames now where it just shows the motions instead yeah. of it being a photo <laughs> yeah i would no. just watch them slap each other and be like i, I paid a thousand dollars for this <laughs> like it, it's it's crazy i love love it and it, it's like even my girls are into it like my daughter loves Britt baker we got her thank god for the cameos and all that shit out there now yeah like, that's awesome we can get the my, my my youngest was obsessed with matt hardy when he was broken you know, like she loved the delete, delete, delete. And she was like <laughs> her, I think it was her fourth birthday. We we got a Matt Hardy cameo. And like one of the ones where they call you, you know, yeah. like and actually talk to you live. Yep, that's and awesome. she was just like, you know, and, and Matt was so cool about it. He's like, ah, what's up, little one? And you're like, oh man, like they know what they're doing. They they know what they have. And that's yeah. why I love when especially nowadays, like the 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 talent now are so in tune with their fan base. Yep. It's not like a, a, a honky talk man situation. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everybody's super, super yeah. beautiful. And, like, great. Yeah. <laughs> but like I I ran up to Brit. Uh, this was the first all out uh, after pandemic. Uh, so this was my first AEW show was I went to the dynamite. This is my first AEW pay-per-view. I was there. I put the Chad's came up from, you know, down South. You know, Hawk came up and like, it was, I was the first time meeting them in person. Yeah. And so it was it was cool to like put physical people to the yeah. to these pictures that we're always <laughs> looking at. But uh yeah, I walked up to Britt Baker and I was like, oh Britt, I was like, can, can I show you something real quick? And she like it wasn't like she was like, ah, what the fuck, weirdo? Like she, I was You're like, not right? <laughs> my, my daughter, like she dressed as you for Halloween. And she was like, she's such a cutie. I was like, That's is awesome. it okay if we like get a picture real quick? And she's like, I'll shoot a video for it. Like she was so that's sick. nice and she was talking to her like her dad and her sister at the time like she was like hell fuck yeah and like it, the people like that That's i so love cool. it like darby's one of those guys like they, they just get it sammy sammy's one of those guys that goes above and beyond like uh, you know, just a genuine good person you could see it you could tell who is and who isn't you know what i mean yeah and it's it's awesome when it when it, play, it plays out that well and i yeah. i couldn't be happier <laughs> yeah that's, i was gonna say like yeah i was gonna say that's one of the things i appreciate about you know aew um is like the it's the the intimacy with the uh with yeah. the fans and stuff like that it's like the you know the the acknowledgement of the fans 
you know, we're the tribal chiefs. Finally, did. Yeah, yeah. Not even that. It's not. They like, acknowledge you know, like, us. It's, no. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's, it's more or less like they're in the stage. I'm a ho- I mean, hopefully they stay this way. They, you know, they don't get. You know, AEW doesn't get like too huge where it's like. You know, now they're going to be this big corporate entity, and now they're just like f you fans, yeah, do whatever. But I'm, I'm hoping they say that with that like kind of level of like connectedness with the with the fans and stuff like that, because that all the people there, you can definitely tell that they're uh they're very that you can tell that they're like thankful for wh- the spots that they're in right now. Hundred percent, very grateful yeah. for for where they are and who who even knows them and acknowledges them. Like all those, they their first time getting an action figure. A lot of the a lot of the like, men and women yeah. on that roster. So, like, you know, it's, I mean, it's so they just seeing that is probably surreal to them. But then having you walk up and say, Hey, my daughter dressed up as you, it's like they, 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 they don't think of that stuff. They don't think, yeah. like, oh, no little girls dressing up as Britt Baker for, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you actually show it, it's like, Holy shit, this is reality. Yeah. People are actually no, doing this. So. It's a blast, man. And that was, that's like, uh, when, if you want to swing back to the those guys getting their figure for the first time, like, that's one of my favorite things to be there for is to see like yeah, well, Yuda, Yuda got to see like the, the blood and guts one and his yeah. kind of upcoming one coming out. He got to see it in person. Like, and I was like right next to him as he's looking at it. And I, we did a, a little like interview piece. I don't think it released, but I was just like, we were Yuda. Like you, you are the official first time figure here. Like you know, how awesome is that for you? And how awesome is it that you get to bring the first ever figure form of a Ring of Honor title? Like yeah, yeah. you know, it's got to be like he's afterwards. He's like, can I go show? Can I take a picture of this? And yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah, do it, man. Like I love. I it's one of the coolest things to just not. not I don't even say be a part of, but just be in that moment there, seeing people like. Yeah, uh, Jamie Hayter's first figure. She got the like. I watched her see it for the first time. Like, you know, like freak the fuck out and like, oh my god, <laughs> this is so cool. And like, and, and that's that's so awesome. And this goes to like a, a, circling back to watching our our people grow and glow. Yeah, I love. It, it makes me so happy to see Hobbs going. Man, that's a badass spine buster you set up there with my toy. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> and like they, they get it. They, like they all love it. It's it's the best, man. <laughs> oh man, I could go. On, we can go on and on for. Uh, yeah, for I could do this I for think. like the rest. But, uh, of the, I mean, we could. We, I got. I got. I got. I got some time. No, <laughs> oh, man, no. But, uh, we'll we'll end it there. But yeah, no, that's, this was awesome having you. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining, man. This was. Thank, wait, I feel like I have to have me. you on again because I feel like you have. A lot more stories. Oh, we we, we haven't even scratched the surface. And yet. I, I want I want to hear more stories of uh of your <laughs> of your of your uh, interactions with different uh, celebrities and yeah man. Going, oh, I, I got I got plenty too, man. Absolutely plenty. <laughs> I, might like, I might have to do like a special like uh Mike Bell. I, I open mic with uh with uh the MVP Marco and Mike Bellcaster just to <laughs> stories are like a, a I'm, little mini series going. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, brother. Anytime. I, I appreciate you for inviting me on here. Uh, I yeah. always love talking to you, but this is a, a, it's a good to get a little intimate one on one time, not on a wrap up, not on a raw down. Yeah, no, we're like, not here pleasing the fans. We're just enjoying each other's company, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> this is the, 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 the thing I love about this show too is it's it's most of the time it's the first time I'm actually speaking to the person like obviously we've spoken before but like yeah in a one-on-one setting that's why i like doing this because it's like obviously if you know the term open mic it's your first time standing on stage and yeah you, know, you might bomb you might you might not <laughs> but uh but ho- hopefully when you when people listen to this we didn't bomb i think i i, I enjoyed it. i enjoyed you hopefully i didn't bomb yeah i mean just, gr- you oh, have a you have a standing dude. here i'm just the guy <laughs> dude, we could have ended it at the dave Chappelle story we didn't even have to go after that i could have been like 15 hey, minutes in we're, we're, we're done <laughs> we're good it's we could have <laughs> ended the show right there dude, and people would have been like holy shit what the hell but yeah, uh no, was, listen just, man I, I i'm always happy to come and talk tell stories talk wrestling anything man uh and it, 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 absolute pleasure to be here i can't thank you enough for having me on yeah definitely now uh, give you give give your plugs out where, where can no we man I, I plug I, turnbuckle tavern first and foremost because i wouldn't be anywhere without those beautiful group of extraordinary gentlemen including yourself the pod foundation everybody you guys have been so gracious taking me into your under your wings and bringing me in, <laughs> keeping me warm from from all the the bad stuff that happened to me before <laughs> but uh yeah the turnbuckle tavern.com you, you guys if you if you watch fig night uh the wrap up any of the shows we do shot of nostalgia i, I, I mean plug shot of nostalgia 
that was like it's been one of the funnest journeys of my lifetime it's was going back show. watching these things with ace and it's just a blast but uh yeah everybody uh I'm plugging everybody else besides me. <laughs> I'm at Mike <laughs> Belcaster, uh, wherever you need to find me. Basically, I, I Instagram is my hopping place. I don't, I don't really use Twitter, Twitter anymore. It's 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 more of like a I go there for the memes and the retweets to see what people yeah. are posting. I don't, I don't it, it, sometimes I'll share photos on there, but not too much. But you can see all my beautiful artwork. I, maybe the, I think of the picture of. Chappelle is up on my Instagram. Maybe not. I don't know. But if not, remind me. I will send it to you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, lots of lots of cool stuff, man. I'm uh, at Mike Belcaster Instagram. Uh, and uh, just hang around, man. Follow along for the journey. We've got a lot of cool stuff. I'm taking a lot of cool photos. Uh, it's it's good to be seen, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. And the same thing here. You can. Uh, he already said the Pod Foundation. You'd actually go to the IG at Pod Foundation. That's where. Uh, you get all the up-to-date shows when all the shows drop. Um, I'll be transparent. I'm the one that does it, so you'll see all the updates. And <laughs> everything. So if you can't go to each individual uh, uh, Instagram page, you can just go to Pod Foundation and see all the new shows as they appear. Yeah. Uh, you can go to the MVP Marco. That's my Instagram. Start starting to get a little bit more active on there. Uh, so Woo-hoo. hopefully that you know, <laughs> hopefully I build there. Twitter, not so much. I am on Twitter. Same thing at the MVP Marco. I am on the Twitter machine. Uh, as, as Sheena likes to say, at Chick Foley Show. I run that over there. Sheena is obviously on uh, Chick Foley on IG. Uh, Chickfoley.com if you want to follow every all the musings, I would say, of the, uh, of the Chick <laughs> Foley crew. So we're, uh, we're, we're not turning out as much you know, product as the Turnbuckle Tavern, but we're, we're, starting to, we're, we're starting to get a lot of shows out there. We'll, we're, we're, we're trying to keep up with, you know, in between the uh, in between the the pay per views, as I like to call them, when Chino Absolutely. likes to show up, so uh, yeah, <laughs> but anyway, in between good qu- content. I mean, that's that's what it is. Yeah. We're we're all out here doing our thing, man, and that's uh, you guys are amazing at what you do and we, like that's i was a fan of chick foley before i even started doing the podcast like so it's it's super cool to be involved with y'all man i, re- I remember when she hit up our other former partner and he was like yeah. oh, i don't want to do it man and i was like no you should do it because like they're good people like we're, yeah. <laughs> we're a big enough playground for all of us to play <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I couldn't be happier to have crossed paths with you guys i mean it, made friends with all of you I mean, like, this is the most wrestling friends been in my entire lifetime and i could oh yeah definitely. Insane <laughs> the amount of people you we, we met and all the friends yeah like you can like literally go anywhere across the country and like know know somebody which is yeah pretty insane man. <laughs> like, hey oh you want to go to new york or oh, you get anthony and freaking tom out there you want to go yeah. to freaking tennessee you get sheena down there <laughs> get, like literally all over the country there's like you have we can we can go know. coast to coast, man. And, Even and across the pond, you get uh, yeah, hundred percent. Oh, Nick Storm, man, Nick Storm. Uh, Nick Storm. We have uh, <laughs> in, our, in our Facebook group. We have our we, uh, Phil Dunnett. He's our uh, yeah. I love Phil. Phil. in the UK. <laughs> uh, he's uh, we can go visit him. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's he he's, he he likes to shake me down when I don't get my picks in early for our. <laughs> so I, I'm kind of scared of him. But uh, anyway, we'll, <laughs> no, we'll have the show there. But uh, thank you very much for. Um, for joining uh, on this audio journey, as I like to call it. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Hell yeah. Peace.